think I got it finally. So uh, my name is Nathan Wood. I work for uh, Synthetic Genomics. Uh, my partner in crime is uh, Dan Gibson, and he's traveling today, so I get the pleasure of uh, talking to you. So what I want to talk to you about is um, a new um, idea that we had about three years ago that we launched under an early access program. And it's what we call the BioXP, and this goes to taking a service lab and all those things in a service lab that are, for example, long turnaround time, a bottleneck that you may see in the service lab, not having it on your bench, and trying to bring <coughs> this kind of synthesis capability to your bench. Now, under that early access program, we learned a lot. So first of all, when you put it in machine out like this, it makes the genes, but you still have to do the downstream picking and sequencing. And so we've been working very hard to get to a point where you don't have to do those downstream uh, workflows for people. Um, some of the things that you would see in a service lab is they do that and they deliver you an error-free clone, but you wait for that work. And so this brings it to your, to your bench and you can see some of the benefits of the machine. We've been selling it in the United States. We, this is an old slide, so we're just short of 100 machines so far. And so it's been widely adopted and I'll give you uh, examples of where it's been adopted. If you look at our portfolio development, what we're doing to try to minimize the number of uh, genes that you have to actually, or, or clones that you have to pick, as well as the functionality of the machine, the machine was built with a barcode on button. And so one of the things that happens with this kind of an instrument, it's the first I've ever seen in the marketplace, is that you don't have to buy another machine when an application is, is um, um, added. All you have to do is buy the software package, the barcode comes on the reagents, and the, the barcode actually turns the machine on. And so it's, it's an instrument that doesn't have the protocols on it, it reaches out to the cloud, it, buy, it brings in the, the um, actual uh, um, protocol that you need, and brings the machine um, up to speed. So what does the machine do right now? The machine makes 1.8 KB fragments. It started by just making double-stranded fragments. Uh, we then added it, cloning it into Puck. <coughs> we then added it, cloning into a um, customer vector. So right now, if you're actually a researcher, you can go put your own particular vector on the machine, um, and you can then clone directly into it, so it eliminates any kind of sub-cloning if you got it from a service lab where you got it in a manufacturing vector and then had to subclone it. Um, you can actually put, uh, it makes 32 genes at a time, so you can actually put on the instrument, you can put four, excuse me, eight of your, um, uh, uh, let me do this right, so you can do four different um, vectors and put eight different clones into those particular vectors. Also, at the beginning of this year, we, start, we moved in 2006 to a full launch. At the beginning of this year, we actually then moved backwards in the process, and we started with a next-gen library prep, so not only can you do the front end to a sequencer, you can then, after you're done with the sequencing, you can write that particular gene. Um, we've started working on, we've silently been putting on better error correction through it. Dan's been working very hard on this. He promises me, but again, this is internal, that we'll get down to picking two colonies by the end of the year. He's already got it working in his lab, and Dan uses this for most of his work. He has six instruments in his lab, and he uses it for all of his work in building organisms from the ground up. So what you see is you actually see us going longer, so we're working on going longer. That was the critical stage was to get the error correction right. Um, and then we're actually going to start to make the other analytes on the machine. Again, that will not require any additional purchases of the machine except for software upgrades. So where has it been of interest um, in an application? Interesting enough, the immunotherapy companies have gone to this democratized approach to use it in their cancer treatments for personalized medicine. And so we're selling most of our instruments into these new immunotherapy companies. And so what is happening now is there's a tremendous amount of people that are going in and biopsying 
tumors, they're getting that specific gene set, they're sending it, to, um, either using it on the machine or they're sending it to us, we're sending it back to them and they put it into uh, their particular, uh, uh, with their particular adjuvant into their therapy. What we've been asked to do when we've done it is that um, companies have basically gone into clinical trials uh, with the machine. We're, we're in one company's IND right now that's been filed with the FDA. And so we've developed a GMP suite to help them through their phase one trial. And that GMP suite has all the different uh, uh, materials that you need in that suite to be able to go from genes all the way to purified plasmids that can be delivered back to those particular um, clients. Also, we have customers that have put it into their own GMP suites to do that. And so with that, it's a different uh, model as far as instead of having a service lab or a large uh, boundary to do the work, the instrument's roughly uh, $60,000. It can do a million base pairs a month if you want to use it that much, and you can just start doing the math with all the instruments that we have out there and how many millions of base pairs can be built. So that's uh, the end of my talk, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes? What's the input material for the gene synthesis step? Is it a, like a 96-well plate of oligos or something? And what, what yeah, length are those? Thank you for that. Um, so you get everything. Is, it's a closed system. So you get all the reagents from us in three to five days. So you go onto our website. You put in your sequence. We then synthesize the oligos. We then deliver it with the reagent plate, the error correction, and the purification beads. All you have to do is add ethanol to a trough. Um, and it's hands off, it runs overnight, and in the morning it's waiting for you to then do the downstream work. How long are the oligos? Uh, our oligos are roughly 60 MERS. We use a Gibson assembly process. Thank you.